I have here a token of my esteem and regard. You've given me quite enough presents. Yes, but this is your birthday present. This must not be opened before midnight tomorrow night. If you love listening to this show, please consider giving a rating and a review on Amazon Alexa or wherever you listen. We want to continue bringing you this amazing content, and part of our ability to do that means that we need a big audience. Now, it may not seem like much, but rating and reviewing the show will help more people find us, just like how you found this show. Simply on any podcast platform, search for our show, scroll down to the bottom, and push five stars. It's that easy. Thanks for supporting the show. Today, I'm joined by David Wolf, who is the founder of Ocean Habitats, uh, which is a nonprofit committed to ocean conservation through installation of mini reefs. So my understanding is that uh, before this, you were in real estate for, for many years. Um, I wonder uh, if you could share a little bit about what kind of work that you did. Uh, I, obviously, like everyone, I started out as an agent. Um, kind of quickly found I was very good at it. Uh, I, I rose to be the number one agent uh, in my office and then soon uh, the area that I started in. Uh, after a short period of time, I decided to own my own offices. So uh, I kind of got the fortune of starting that out just before the implosion of the real estate market in 2007 in Florida. <laughs> but I took that opportunity of that problem to actually acquire uh, real estate businesses also uh, expanded out into title, mortgage, um, escrow, insurance, kind of anything that you can think of that has to do with a real estate closing. Uh, we eventually had businesses in and expanded nationally. Okay, great. That's, uh, that's very exciting indeed. And, and certainly a very dynamic time period with um, collateralized mortgage uh, you know, obligation instruments. So it sounds like you went from an agent to becoming a broker and then got into some of the uh, peripheral types of businesses that makes up the holistic uh, value chain. How did that eventually lead to what you're doing today? Well, the companies that I started, uh, they grew, um, a number of them grew very large and the amount of time that it took for me to, um, you know, manage that on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I decided to, you know, kind of enough was enough. So I, took a step back and sold off my ownership portions uh, in those companies mm -hmm. and took a little time off to relax and not be stressed out and not work a hundred hours a week. And um, took some time to think about what is it that I love to do? Uh, what's the time in my life where uh, you know, every day was a great day as I um, you know, got up to, to get going. And it brought me back to what I went to college for, which was to be a marine biologist. And I thought about, the mini reef, which is something that we were developing at the time, uh, wasn't quite done, but there were water quality problems in Florida when I was developing that. They had only become worse uh, in the 20 years since I worked on it. So I decided to bring that idea back out. It was a good idea when we started it, just didn't have the funding it needed. Um, now with uh, the real estate you know, business background that I had, it was easier to um, you know, put together a corporation that could actually make this happen. So I restarted Ocean Habitats and I uh, haven't looked back. We now have almost 5,000 units in the water. So I think we probably need to step back a little bit. So let's start with uh, what is Ocean Habitats? And then, and then after you talk about the mission and the vision for the organization, what exactly are you guys doing around the, the mini reefs? Well, Ocean Habitats is a nonprofit uh, corporation. We develop uh, artificial fish habitats to basically mimic nature and grow uh, young, just hatched uh, crabs and fish, uh, shrimp, things like that, to get them to a larger size so that they're more survivable uh, in the wild. Um, you know, the mini reef is the device that uh, we first came out with, which was based on the work I did in college back in the 90s. 
Um, there are actually more units than just that now, different sizes uh, could actually grow different animals depending on what we're doing. Um, so Ocean Habitat's mission is to bring coastal waters to life. Um, sadly, they're not anywhere near as alive as they used to be, especially not when I was uh, young. So, um, you know, I basically got tired of saying, I wish somebody would do something about this since I had a device that could help with the problems we have. I decided to, you know, bring it out and get it public and get it in the water and, and have it start, you know, making good things happen. Okay, so, so let's, uh, let's get into a little bit of depth around um, the actual, uh, the mini reef themselves. What kind of materials are we talking about, the size, some of the specifications of how that works? Uh, the mini reef is made out of polypropylene. Uh, that's a type of plastic. It's used extensively in like marinas, harbors. Uh, it's used to protect like dock pilings uh, in the water so that marine organisms don't destroy them any faster than the salt water is going to already. Uh, it has a very long lifespan, about 500 years uh, in, in salt water. Um, it stays very stable for a long time. So microplastics are not a problem until in the future. Um, there definitely is a point where we have to pull the units out of the water, replace them with something new uh, so that we don't have a pollution issue that we're causing. Uh, so made out of polypropylene, a mini reef is approximately three feet long by two feet wide, and it's two feet tall. So it extends about 22 inches down into the water because it does have to uh, float over the surface in order to work, uh, work appropriately. Okay. Uh, so what kind of marine life is it ideal for, and does it supplement the existing coral reef, or is it a replacement? Uh, what it is is actually juvenile habitat. So it's, it's like uh, intercoastal waters. You can think um, saltwater marsh grasses, or like if you're in South Florida or somewhere tropical, um, it would be in like mangrove uh, forests. So what, what we're doing is giving a place for filter feeding animals. Uh, most people are familiar with oysters uh, or mussels um, that attach to the unit, just like they would those marsh grasses or mangrove trees. And they, they live their whole life on there and all they do 24 hours a day is eat. And what they eat is microorganisms in the water that we have too much of, um, you know, plankton, things like red tide, brown tide, uh, things that cause a lot of water quality issues and also health hazards to humans. So you know, the mini reef kind of sets up that little ecosystem the fish and crabs and things that grow up on it from just being hatched, when they get big enough, they have to leave the unit uh, because uh, simply the, there's, the spacing doesn't allow them to stay in there very long. Um, and then they would go offshore, like if that's a type of species uh, that goes offshore, they would go out to the reefs and help populate it. Gotcha, no, I understand. And how many of these do you need in a certain region, whether it's marshland or the kind of the coastal areas to actually make the kind of impact that it needs to make? Well, each unit, each mini reef, uh, they'll filter once they're developed, once they have animals living on them, uh, they filter on average 30,000 gallons of water a day. So that's about a backyard swimming pool. Um, and they produce around 500 animals. So, you know, fish, shrimp, crabs, things that will leave the unit every single year. Um, you know, in Florida, for instance, you know, on average, we lost about 55% of our coastal uh, wetlands to development, mm. um, to people like me when I was in real estate. <laughs> uh, and so to replace that is very hard. I mean, that's, that's a lot of coastline that has been altered permanently. Um, however, also in a state like Florida, you, know, you have over 800,000 uh, privately owned docks behind homes, um, that type of thing. So you can place millions of mini reefs in the water just using wasted space that currently we do nothing with. And that can, that can actually replace, you know, a portion of what we've lost. It's not going to replace it all, um, but it's going to help. So uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about the kind of deployment that you have in place and uh, any kind of plans for the future. Well, currently we are very, very heavily deployed in Florida. Uh, we are in over 150 uh, coastal cities in the state. 
Um, however, we are also in uh, 13 other coastal states. Uh, we have freshwater units in 10 uh, inland states in the US. We have shipped units to uh, Puerto Rico, um, the Bahamas, and we were actually getting ready to do something in Australia before COVID uh, came and, and shut everything down. So our, our plan right now as we're, we're finally fully getting out of research and development uh, kind of stage um, is to you know, increase our footprint, especially in tropical areas um, where the mini reef can perform at a high level um, due to the, the quick growth of animals uh, in warmer waters. Um, and that's, you know, our next six to 12 months is to try to you know, get out there to some of these areas where we've sent a few units, but we'd like to have a thousand units, you know, instead of 12, make it more like Florida, kind of repeat our success here and other places. So I want to come back to the, the scale question in just a second, but you mentioned that at some point this, uh, you know, material will eventually break down and, and have uh, externalities like microplastics, which again, I would imagine is fairly long um, time away. However, it will occur. So do you, how does it work in terms of planning and maintenance so that uh, at a certain point in time, it, it does get actually removed and replaced? Right. Well, the, when I designed these, number one, we did not want them to be a, you know, a typical physical product that every five years you want them to turn over and the people to have to buy new units. So we wanted a long lifespan. Um, the only real maintenance on them is keeping them attached to the docks that they're under. Uh, they're, they're tether lines to make sure that they're not damaged like in a hurricane and need to be replaced. And our thought process is about every 35 to 45 years, um, the entire dock has to be taken out and replaced. The, uh, there's too much damage from saltwater um, activities during those decades. More than likely, you would also remove the mini reefs. Um, it'd be difficult, especially if a seawall is coming out and being replaced, to have them somewhere in the area um, and then put them back underneath a new dock. So more than likely, most of them you know, will get changed out with the changing the docks that they're attached to. Um, they can be recycled. Uh, the materials they're made out of are fully recyclable. Um, but obviously some will head to the landfill, just like all the materials the dock are going to, unfortunately. So, so a couple of questions rise up. One is around, you know, the, the planning and phase approach so that you're not simply removing that entire ecosystem that's been growing for the last 30 years or so. Uh, and then the other aspect is, um, you know, by then uh, your company may not be around or the responsibility of the dock, let's say, or the harbor, for instance. How would that be dressed in kind of a longer term horizon? Well, that, that is when people do donate to have these put in. Uh, it is made clear that this is now your property. Mm -hmm. um, we do come back to some situations where it's a great research opportunity to see it, maybe it's a different um, environment than what, where we've had units before, um, to video them, take a look, how are they performing, that type of thing. But it is a responsibility of the, the business owner or, or uh, homeowner um, who has these, just like it's their responsibility, their dock. Technically, the, the state or the federal government has allowed them to put this dock in the water, which is not part of their property. Um, they're required to deal with it when, they, when it's time to replace it. They have to take it out at their expense. Um, so the mini reef will be similar to that. This is something that will last for a long time under there, but it will have to be maintained. It will have to be replaced at some point. So I've been joined by David Wolf, who is a founder of Ocean Habitats. Thanks for joining today. If you've enjoyed this episode, take a moment to rate our show on any podcast platform that you listen to. Scroll down to the bottom and push five stars. It's that easy. And as always, thanks for listening.